So let's talk about uh, thinking space. Um, can you give us a little bit of an explanation about thinking space? And I'd love to hear an example for yourself of how you increased your level of thinking space. Absolutely. So thinking space is, is often what we are hired for in our jobs to do. So a lot of the people I work with work in a knowledge environment. So they're literally paid. A lot of the leaders I talk to, even the um, business owners I talk to, like yourself, I would hire Janine for her thinking, for her smarts. And what happens is we end up overloading ourselves with so much other stuff that we just don't give ourselves sufficient time and space to do the very thing that we've been hired or asked or employed to do. So thinking space is around, it's, it's often people are struggling, they're, they're overwhelmed. They like they, and they look at their to-do list and they cannot figure out the first thing to do. And they almost get paralyzed by, I know I've got a lot on, but I just cannot figure out the first thing. And so what we want to do is we want to remember that the brain is meant for creating ideas, not storing them. And so the first thing we do is we've just got to get everything out of our head and create the space in there for it to do the creative ideation, in effect, have ideas. And so a couple of things that I personally do, um, I, I have a, sorry, I'll, I'll grab it right now. I have a, a, a designed by myself. Um, uh, it was based on my previous book, The First Two Hours. I, I have a new one, but this is the one I've been using since you asked. And every day before I start anything, and if it means that I have to get up a bit earlier and, and do this earlier, I do, but I do not start a day without doing some kind of brain dump of everything that's on my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I literally empty out my head. Uh, and it can, sometimes it's to, things that I need to do. And so I organize them into my to-do list, which is why this book is very well used and thumbed and almost falling apart uh, at the end of the year. Um, but the other thing I also write down is just what's on my mind. And so it doesn't, you know, a lot of time we have personal admin on our mind or just thoughts on our mind or ideas on our mind. And I'm a huge fan of just getting them out of the head. So I call it a wipe the mind or a brain dump, whatever you want to do, just empty your head every morning. And that is, for me, it feels like, um, it's like taking the, so imagine you take the top of your head off and give it a, give it a dust and pop it back on just gets away the cobwebs, gets away the dust, and it creates, for me, space to then do what I'm more often than not hired to do, which is being paid for my thinking, being paid for my thought leadership. Mm. Uh, Donna, what time of day do you, when you talk about first thing in the morning, because I love that concept, um, and I'm thinking about myself quite selfishly as I'm interviewing you, and I go, that is the sort of thing that I do actually probably when I first sit at my desk but mm -hmm. as you're talking and explaining this I'm going actually potentially this should be the first thing I do when I'm having my cup of tea coffee for me in the morning um, because it is that when you're first waking up and the stuff that you might have been dreaming about or thinking about um, it feels to me that potentially it's the very very first thing yeah. that you do before you get into your day because otherwise that list creation becomes work and you forget about the stuff that keeps you awake at night. Would that be right? So I'm curious for you, when, when in your day do you do, when you talk about first thing, is it yeah. over brekkie? Is it when you hit sit, get into the office? How does it work for you? It's a wee bit of both. Uh, so I'm usually sitting, it's usually when I'm sitting at my desk, but it is well before. I've usually had a bit of brekkie um, beforehand. I've been for a walk and then I'm having my first cup of tea and I'm sitting at that space. And, and so... Again, it, it, this is the knock-on effect, right? So I organise I, I organize my calendar. So I do have space before my first mm, gig or appointment or obligation of the day, right? And so I do try and, and, and do that first thing. But I'm actually just trying to remember, as you were asking that question, I'm just trying to remember her name and I was hoping it would come to me in this interview and you never know, it just might. But there was a book um, that I read years ago that changed my life, I guess, uh, called The Artist's Way. Uh, Julia Cameron, there you go. I knew I'd remember it if I uh, just tried hard enough. And Julia Cameron, so this is kind of a, a version of what she calls um, morning pages. Mm. And so she suggests that you do that. Now, Julia Cameron writes for, for writers who have writer's block. 
Um, and so that wasn't necessarily why I was doing it. I was, I'd just been told that this was a great exercise. And there's a couple of other cool things in there as well. So don't be put off by, you know, I'm not a writer. Don't worry about it. She, it's good for anyone. But she says for about 12 weeks, which I did, uh, every morning, the moment you wake up, the moment you wake up, grab a piece of paper and just write a stream of consciousness for around, she suggests 30 minutes, which is what I did. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, um, but I did it for 30 minutes. And I found that to be, it created so much space for me in my mind. Um, now, I don't need, do I need to do it? Look, probably. But for me, I've just altered that regime now to do it just when I start my day to just make sure I'm clearing stuff out. But to your point, Janine, there's a really, you know, some people tell me they do it at the end of the day. So they have their day, they stop. And in the last, you know, hour of work or whatever, they just sit and ponder, they reflect on what they've done. Some people write done lists rather than to-do lists. Mm -hmm. And then they also clear their head of what's going on because for them, it's a sleep strategy. How do I empty out everything that's going on around in my head so I get a good night's sleep? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure it matters particularly the time of day, but I do love your thinking. If it serves you to do it while you're pondering your cup of tea, you know, have a sip, write a few stuff down, a bit of stuff down. I say go for it. The, it's the principle of emptying the brain that's the most important part of this. Um, all I can see in my head, because I'm such a visual person, is that emoji with the top of the head coming off and the steam coming out. <laughs> that's all I'm visualising. 